Hey guys, this is Gio and Elizabeth, and welcome back to the second semester of Patriot Update. Okay, so today we're going to interview Dr. Vargas about what she has learned over distance learning for this semester. Okay, let's get into those questions. So to begin with, you became a principal at a new high school in the middle of a global pandemic. Considering all the challenges, how was your first semester as a Patriot? You know, as it being my first semester, the hard part I think is is being so far away from everyone. I I really am a, a person who likes to see people face to face, likes to interact with them. Um, and so the difficulty of, of being far away from everyone, you know, this is how we see everybody is, is through a screen now. And so the difficulty I think of that um, was hard because I wanted to, to people to get to know me. And, and so that was, that was a little bit of difficulty, um, but I think a lot of what I had to do was just meet people one on one, which means that a lot of one on one interviews or conversations like this, um, spending the time to really get to know people that way has been really, really helpful. Um, in regards to staff, um, for me, once we had students back on campus, as scary as it was to have students back on campus, especially because of the pandemic and all of the unknowns, being able to talk to students was my favorite. Um, there were a couple of times even when kids got in trouble and they sent them to the office and I was like, no, it's okay. Like, I'll, I'll take them. I'll take them. Um, you know, that kind of interaction. Um, I really miss having kids on campus, but at least it's helpful to have some. Um, but also understanding that um, it's hard. It's, it's hard for people to be at home. It's hard for students to be at home. That kind of connection. Um, you know, I was forced to work from home a few times um, just for the safety of, of the staff here. And that was hard. Um, having to be at home with my kids and, and just being pulled a million different directions. And so I think all of that, right, of, of those kinds of connections with people in, in whichever ways you can make them, we found out that that was more important, I think, than we had ever realized before. Okay. What have you learned from having the entire first semester online? That technology doesn't solve everything. Um, that just because you may have a fast computer and fast internet, um, that doesn't mean that kids are paying attention. It doesn't mean that um, it, it solves kind of all of the issues that you know you can identify when you're in a classroom. That teachers need support and need help too. Um, while the teachers may be there and be your support, a big part of what I have to do is also be the support for teachers because you don't necessarily know what's, as students, you don't know what's going on kind of behind their own closed doors and some of the frustrations they may be having and you know it helps to have another adult and sometimes for me it's it's the principal right um, for them to really touch base with and make sure that they're okay um, and okay looks different for everybody I think that's the other piece is that some people okay is let me chill with my dog um, another one is let me get five minutes in the bathroom alone without my kids um, okay looks different for everyone and so being able to identify that and, and connect with people in that way um, has been really important too Okay, so what needs to improve in order for online learning to run more efficiently? For who? I, I think that's the, the main question too that you have to ask is, are we talking about the rest of the semester? Because online learning, you know, some kids aren't, aren't logging on. Um, some kids have felt a complete disconnect. And so the other piece of what we're doing too is going to homes and checking in on kids and making sure that they're okay and sometimes that okay means that they're fed they're safe um they've checked out of school but again like doing random home visits regularly to make sure those kids are okay um, because sometimes online learning doesn't work for people some people really do need that and so i think we have to be aware that what learning looks like for people isn't all the same and it doesn't matter how much technology and sometimes how wonderfully structured distance learning can be sometimes it's still not enough. So we have to address those issues in different ways. Um, and that's the hard part is because your resources are limited. There's only four administrators. And so how many can go and go to somebody's house and check on them and, and still have to be here when there's kids on campus. Um, so delicate juggling of systems and structures and 
figuring out what we need to change and shift and what's working and what's not. Um, so right now, I think with online learning, there's a groove for some kids because it's second semester. And so you have an understanding of what's to be expected at this point. But for other ones, it really is just what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is going home and knocking on doors and just making sure kids are okay. Um, you know, it's, that's the hard part is that learning is going to have to look different moving forward. Yes. What is one thing that you learned through distance learning that you wouldn't have learned if you were on campus? I think for me, it really is the need of some kids and parents, um, having those conversations with kids and parents um, about the importance of being in a classroom and sometimes not even with their own teacher, but just being in a classroom because the setting really does get kids into the mindset of being in school. Um, I was talking to a parent last week and she was just like, my kids don't care. They just want to be there because they can't focus at home. They just want to be in a classroom so that they can focus there. And so physical setting actually matters for kids. Um, that not everybody's help can go and just go into their room and shut the door and be in, be in school. Uh, sometimes they need a classroom where it's quiet, but at least they're at school. And so that mindset really gets them in a place of learning. That is really important. And it matters, I think, a lot more than people fully realize. Um, and something that I think the Learning Pods is trying to answer for the kids and the fam families that feel safe enough to come. Um, so it's, I think I, I wouldn't have fully understood that if I hadn't been on campus and seen the success of some of our students who were having like full D's and F's and they came here and they were just able to, to be in a different mindset and really be successful that way. Okay, so one hot topic right now is obviously graduation. So what do you have in mind for this year's ceremony? That is quite literally the conversation we were having this morning about graduation. Um, for me, I would love to have everybody here. Um, you know, all the seniors here on the field, socially distanced and spread. Um, somebody said comparable to what it looked like for, for the Super Bowl. And, um, but I think the, the difficulty too is how do we monitor the people in the stands? So while I think the students would be awesome and like fully follow all of the rules and expectations because you guys are hungry for that kind of interaction and to be with each other. Um, I think the difficulty is, is how do we do that with families? Um, and so that is really just the problem we're trying to figure out is how do we make sure that families stay safe? They stay socially distanced. Um, we make sure that they're in areas that are safe for them for graduation. So right now, we're looking to have a full-blown graduation with all students at the same time, but we have other plans. We have maybe split into halves or into fourths um, because we don't know what the pandemic's gonna look like in June. So we're hoping that numbers decrease so we can do that. But if they stay constant, um, we have other contingency plans that we're gonna have to put into place. But we hope, and what we're planning for is having all seniors here but again the pandemic just throws plans out the window so we got to be prepared for whatever comes are you are there any plans that you or the district have for school after covid the conversation is ongoing um i know that there's a, a committee meeting today to discuss of what that would look like um, when we come back again, depending on numbers and, you know, the, the tiers and the colored tiers that we're in, you know, we could do a hybrid, which is where you have, you know, some similar to like the Mondays, uh, tea time asynchronous and then two days on campus and two days off. And we kind of split the campus that way. That could be an option coming back. Um, you know, a, an option could be you have four different cohorts and one comes back on Monday and another group Tuesday and another group Thursday and another group Friday. Um, so you at least get one day on campus with your teachers. Um, you know, the idea is to continue distance learning maybe for a small group and other ones on campus. So there are options that are being floated out there, but nothing has been decided yet because the pandemic, you can have the most beautiful plans in the world and have everything communicated and organized and then the pandemic throws you for a wrench. So 
there's several different plans right now that, that are being discussed. And so hopefully the closer we get to, to summer and May or, or June, we'll have a much more clear answer of what that might look like so that people have, um, you know, solutions or, or options. Okay, and for the last question, is there any information that you would like students to know about yourself or your plans for next year? So for me, I come to work now. It's going to be every day since, since we're, our numbers are dropping. Um, but it's still hard for me to leave my kids at home. Um, you know, I, I have two little ones, an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old and a dog, the doofiest, goofiest dog in the world who I love. Um, and, you know, they, they got used to me working from home every other day. And now when I, they're like, you're not working from home at all this week. And I was like, no back to being on campus regular time. Um, and so they were sad, right? And my husband's sad because he doesn't have my help. Um, so I, I understand that I'm here on campus every day now. Um, I'm here working, making sure everybody has what they need, but also understand that, you know, I have a home life, I have a family and, um, you know, they love me and they miss me and I do too. But I think as many parents would, would admit, as long as I can get away for a little bit, kind of a, a mental break and a mental vacation. And so that's, that's what I'm doing here, um, you know, but I love what I do. As crazy as it is, as crazy as this year has been, um, as unpredictable as everything has been this year, um, I'm still happy to be here um, and crazy as it is. And as for the future, you know, there's, there's an idea and a vision of, of really being more equity based, um, really talking about social justice and, and addressing some of the hard truths that that exist in our society and that impact our campus. So that is where I want to take it moving forward. Um, and so I have asked this year's juniors to be a part of that conversation for next year. So we have a whole committee and a group and it's not just adults. It really is about students because the school is yours and it's going to impact you and so your voice matters so moving forward that's that's kind of the thought process of where we're going we are so lucky to have you and thank you so much dr vargas for joining us thank yep. you of course and be sure to check out our instagram at orange Glen for more updates on future events and thank you for the interview thank you. dr vargas <laughs> no thank you both i appreciate it yeah of course